All right, there we go. Hello, everyone. How's it going, team here? And this is BXJS development stream. We are finally continuing working on the um, BXJS website. That took a while longer than I wanted it to, but um, here we are finally. Right, so we now have a pretty big database of um, entries that have been scraped, but I am actually having a problem here trying to launch it as a volume from uh, Windows. So the Docker on Windows doesn't seem to be mounting the folder either with the right permissions or I'm not sure what's going on, but basically Mongo just crashes. Um, so we're gonna try to figure that out first and then we're gonna do some, I guess, data visualization in our UI and make some maybe faceted browsing or something like this. Hey Bakao, welcome to the stream. All right, so I did the shared drives, uh, diagnose and feedback, D data, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let me see. So yeah, that should, it seems like it should work, but uh, why the hell does it crashes? If anyone in the chat already worked with MongoDB and Docker on Windows and know why it might crash, please do let me know because um, yeah, that is a bit of a problem. I mean, I'm assuming I can actually create a volume from files and then just use that, but ugh. Uh, using Docker, yeah, mount volume. So the, yeah, the, the issue here is that basically I have my PowerShell and um, if I, so if I remove BXJS Mongo here, I, I'm do Docker run ports, volume data, you know, current dear MongoDB. This is the dump from the server that I have. And I think the 3.6 doesn't really matter because it is basically the latest one. And it just fails for some reason. Docker, uh, let, no, what? Docker logs uh, BXGS Mongo. There we go. And it just says operation not permitted. I not sure why. Um, okay, Docker, Windows, Mongo. Let's see, operation not permitted. There we go. It's, it seems to be frequent enough. So let's have a look. Um, I think, no, that's a different one. Okay, let's see. Docker for Windows issues 138. MongoDB doesn't start when using volumes. Yeah, that seems like it. I mean, that, there's gotta be some fix, right? It's, it's gotta work, fine. Uh, I wanna share my temp, blah, blah, blah. Make DRD test send, and then share drive C. User login, um, you can succeed by running user login slash Docker, what? Uh, I'm sorry, what? Okay, are you logged in a user login? Are you for real right now? Um, I try that there. Okay, so if I use the full path, it just fails. But if I use just users, or just actually user and Mongo wall, then it works? What? <laughs> Are you for real right now? Okay, let's try that. I am curious. Um, remove that. So we are, we don't need the uh, current war gear then, right? So we just go YAML because Windows hates my username and just destroyed it. Projects, BXJS, BX, uh, B, yeah, BXJS website, right? Okay. Are you working now? Really? <laughs> Alrighty then. Okay, yeah, that seems to be working actually. Um, yes, I know that you errored out. So let me just reconnect and there we go. And where's my data actually? Um, I think it's just a bit broken. Let me restart my Robo 3T thing. Connect, uh, where is my data? It does not contain any data. That doesn't seem to be right. Docker exec minus IT. Um, no, wait, what was the... Tech minus IT, BXJS, Mongo, uh, Mongo, right? Um, use, what was the name of the database we used? I don't remember anything, to be honest. It's been so long since we worked on that. Oh boy, I don't remember anything. And config, BXJS. Okay, so we are gonna use BXJS, right? And stand DB. Whoops, I should probably make it a bit quieter. Um, get collection names. There is no data. Why is there no data? That's a good question. Okay, wait a second. Docker logs, PXJS, Mongo. Did it not mount anything? 
Um, I'm gonna be starting path DB data. Okay, here's the question. Docker inspect. I guess it's just mounted in the wrong spot or something. Yeah, just Mongo. So uh, have you tried and select the volumes and reselect them again? You mean in the uh, settings for the Docker? I only have the shared drives enabled for C basically and that's it. I don't think I've tweaked anything else. As far as I know that should not be required, right? Okay, uh, let's see the volume. So where is it actually mounted? So there's our volume and it, it literally binds it to slash yama, what? Okay, then I get I right. Um, I guess that was not the solution. I mean, it, it kind of works. But I guess I guess that's not the right volume because we don't have our data, right? So let's, let's spend the whole stream fighting MongoDB that that will be amazing. Right? So um, yeah, that's actually an option. We could just make a new Docker file and just whoops and just build it, right? That's that's a possibility. I'll find <laughs> Although I kind of hate the idea that that's the thing we have to do. Docker file Mongo, let's just call it this way. Uh, Mongo latest, latest, uh, yes, data logs, what? No, that's not what I want. I can just say copy um, MongoDB to what was it? Data something. I mean, I think that should work, right? Data DB. There we go. And I let's check. Okay, hop. I know there we go. I have the Mongo opened over here. Oh, where's the Docker file? Please show me the Docker file. Uh, latest is probably three six or something. Oh no, it's already four. Okay, I see. Uh, yeah, I might. Hey, Madapotra, welcome to the stream. We are just fighting Docker here. <laughs> where's the latest tag? There we go. Okay, so what is the entry point? MongoD. Okay, so I guess this should work. I I don't know. Let's try. So Docker build minus t txjs mongo right, and I what was the build file? Docker build file. So it's a bit annoying that I have to do that, but okay, let's first check. I think this solution will work definitely because we literally just copy all the data into the container, but there's got to be a better way of doing it, right? This is exactly the right sharing feature does. Unfortunately, Linux SMB support is not rich enough to support MongoDB. Ah, okay, I see. Windows containers and Linux. Uh, right, okay, so there's just a limitation of the Linux SMB. Uh, uh, okay, that's not very nice. <laughs> Okay, I guess we just gonna build it minus F um, Docker file Mongo, maybe I should switch back to Linux for this or sorry to Mac OS, um, because there it just works. Right, so we got that and we just build the current folder that should be fine. I think I should not ignore I don't have Docker ignore good. Okay, so that theoretically should build it. Yeah, the database is quite big. So we yeah, essentially, we just package the whole damn thing into the MongoDB container. A bit annoying, we have to do that. But it seems like on a Windows machine with Docker, there's no other way of doing it. Maybe I should just install MongoDB as a standalone thing. But yeah, let's see. Okay, Docker run minus it. Okay, you know what, I'm just gonna put my old run thing over here. Come on, where are you? There we go. And we don't need the volume anymore, right? And the image is gonna be bxjs mongo. So I think that should solve our problem. Uh, what do you not like response conflict? Oh, because we already have bxjs mongo running. All right, so kill that stuff. Just make sure we are clean. And then we can restart this. Hopefully that should work. Um, okay, bxjs mongo, let's see the logs logs are fine. Looks like recovering data. So okay, so it detected some data over there. Now the question is that actually the data we want? Yes, it is. Okay, disconnect from this one. There's there's our data. There's our collection. So we have the articles now and this is tiny even I cannot see this stuff properly. Okay, and we actually have um, you document. So yeah, we actually have all our full data. As you can see here, the scraper did the job and it all looks nice. All right, so we got the MongoDB running in the background as the important part. So I don't care about that stuff anymore. Why can't I control C out of that? 
You don't use VS Code Docker extension. I am too used to consoles. Like <laughs> I literally would prefer console over the majority of extensions and other things, which I know it sounds silly, but this is just the way my brain works. It's, I don't know, like this is just, yeah, this is, I guess, just the way that I'm too used to that stuff, basically. Okay, um, ta -da -da. okay, we're good. We haven't changed anything. All right, so now that we actually have that, we can start a server and we can actually start doing some queries. Um, now here's the question. So what can we do? We have what? We have keywords extracted, we have text, we have metadata, we have full HTML. We also have titles, categories, and URLs. So we can, we can I guess we can start by making the um, an additional page. So right now we have the weekly, which essentially renders the, um, let me just start it. PM uh, run dev, right? There we go. Okay, so we got, we don't need the Docker stuff anymore. It's a bit sad that it's so poorly supported on Windows, but I guess it's sort of the limitations of SMB. I would hope like <laughs> with the Microsoft pushing the um, VSL so hard, I wish they would also support like the Linux file systems natively. That would be amazing. All right, so, uh, localhost 3000. I think that should, yep, there we go. Okay, XGS Weekly, that should also render stuff. Cool, so we are working and the search should also work. Let's, I don't know, look for Docker. Yep, cool, so we are working, running, database connection is good. Um, I learned to do the console stuff and then I just like to press a button to do basic stuff like build and inspect. I don't know, for some reason, I don't trust buttons. <laughs> Maybe I've just been damaged by very poor software back in the days, but um yeah so that's the thing for me okay let me just close this as well all right so what can we do we can do another page let's call it explore js and um let me think so what do we need we i probably copy the index right so we don't need all the stuff we actually don't need all that stuff as well so we just need pulma we need react we don't need icons here we okay blah, blah, blah. we can kill all of this right are we good now? No, we are not. Kill all of that. BXJ, um, let's just explore BXJS content. Let's call it this way. Schedule title, we don't need styling anymore. And I think that should be good. So if we go to the components nav bar and plop that link, uh, there we go. Explore, explore BXJS content, I guess. Let's call it this way. And let's see, so now we should have this and yeah, okay, so that works. Uh, do the rest, uh, what is the goal in this session? Uh, I mean, the goal is to actually, first of all, see what the hell do we have in database because I assume the quality is gonna be weird in some cases and uh, create a basic UI for faceted browsing, I guess. So this would be like the preliminary goal, let's put it this way. Uh, because I think it would be very interesting to see, for example, what kind of keywords do we have? What are the most popular ones, you know? And then uh, what what's what else did we have? And we could we could see what can we visualize essentially? Because there is like at some point we have to do data cleaning, for example, because I am ninety percent sure that um, there was my uh, no, that's not one, whatever. So I'm ninety percent sure that there is gonna be some very poor quality extractions at different places because we used very stupid algorithms for that, right? So we literally have like, just take this and extract keywords and majority of keywords, I'm guessing there's gonna be like stop words in there and other stuff and we're gonna to have to do cleaning at some point. But for now, I wanna provide uh, fasted browsing using keywords and categories. I wanna provide full text search using the article text, not just the uh, titles. And I guess that's probably it for this session, but uh, let's see how that goes. So uh, what do we need? We need to go to the server first and we need to, where is our roots? So no, this is not it. We got the GitHub roots. I guess we could create a new thing. Uh, whoops, no, that's what I want. And let's create a new file. Let's call it explore.js as well. Why not? And throw in all of this stuff, although we don't really need any of that. Uh, we don't need verify snark down. We don't need any of that. Honestly, we just need uh, fastify wrapper, right? And uh, we can kill, whoops, that is not what I wanted to press. 
and kill all of that. So we got our nice templates and episodes get cache. So we don't care about cache in this case as well. So we just we don't care about fetch as well. And I think that's basically whoops, we literally just want article in here, right? Okay, uh, and I'm just okay, let's just do articles await. Yeah, article. No, I'm apparently I'm terrible at typing today. Find. Okay, so we we'll find the articles and just send them back. Okay, so now we should plug that back into the server. Um, const, let's call it explore routes, right? Require um, explore. I cannot wait to finish the particular, uh, sorry, particular tool that I am building right now because it is it simplifies the development of servers so much it is just a joy to use at least for me. Okay, so we're gonna I guess yeah, I guess maybe API nah, I guess call it exp nah, I mean, it has to be API prefix as well, right? I, I, I think that should work. I don't know if that will work. That's a good question. Can you assign the same prefix to the both? We're gonna try it out. So I'm gonna let's call it explore right so this is a different route so if we restart the whole thing now theoretically we should be able to say localhost uh no 3000 slash api slash explore and we should get the pretty large json of all the articles which um, maybe was a bad idea but you know okay that actually works and i think the other uh, yeah, okay, no, please stop. No, don't kill my browser. No, it's gonna be very large. Okay, so let's just test that the actually other routes work as well. So let's search for Docker. Yes, it does. Okay, cool. So this is working. Right, so now to write in queries. So we said that we want what? We want, uh, so we don't need navbar anymore. We want, uh, first of all, keywords, right? So let's call it keywords. And I guess the easiest, like there's, Usually you have a bunch of ways of doing um, complex queries in MongoDB, right? You have MapReduce and then you have a naive way. The, the amusing thing about it is that MapReduce, even though it's a very powerful concept and MongoDB doesn't really scale that well unless you do uh, sharding, right? So if you have only one instance, you're typically better off doing the keyword analysis, like the queries, like, you know, get all the keywords from all the articles in memory, because it's gonna be faster than doing it with uh, MongoDB MapReduce, which is a bit disappointing to be honest, but this is just how it works. So we're gonna do a query here and we're just gonna say that we want keywords. True, right? I think, I think this is the way you write it. Uh, we just have a Mongo find uh, mongoose, wait, no, that's typo. So you can specify what fields do you want returned. And I think this is how you do that. Uh, da, 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 skip now. Uh, projection, uh, projection optional field select. Okay, so you can do A, B, uh, select A1. No, this is the sorting, right? Or is it just okay, one and zero. Okay, so we just want keywords one, I think that should return basically articles with just keywords. I'm gonna restart that. And we are gonna now trigger that again, um, API explore. Theoretically, we should what 404? Wait, 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 wait a second, what is happening? Uh, why? why is it 404? I'm sorry, what? Oh, because I renamed it, of course. I was like, right, I am not keywords. That is also not correct. Keywords is what I want. There we go. Right, and all of them now have ID and keywords. This is perfect. And as you can see now, the document is way smaller. So this is something that should fit in the memory, right? So um, now what we do is we're gonna um, convert this keywords array into unique keywords, I guess. Um, for the sake of it, I think we're just gonna do them like lower, we, we should also use some stop words. Stop words, English. Um, there is, I know there is a website 
or stop words that is very nice but i don't know you know what i'm just gonna open my skype and uh because i worked exactly on that today so just before we started the stream i finished the work on a data set processing script that did some cleaning of the keywords as well and a colleague of mine shared a very handy website uh where is it come on ah there we go Okay, so yes, uh, I guess English stop words, uh, I guess, can you like export this somehow? Quest free plan? Uh, no, I guess you can't, but okay. I mean, we can just take that, right? And um, here's a, I mean, sure, const stop words. Let's just put it here. And it's line by line, so that's not very convenient, but we can do that, right? Um, what was the LG? No, all ship? No. What was the select all occurrences keywords? Um, okay, you know what? We can do this, right? And shift enter, and no, wait, control enter, yes. No. What? What was the select all occurrences thing again? I am forgetting. What? No. I just screwed everything up. All right, boy, I haven't used that in so long, I forgot. Um, VS Code select all occurrences. Control Shift L. Okay, I probably should rebind it to the, there we go. So yes, we want quotes, enter, and I think that's basically gonna be stop words, right? And this is gonna be an array. Okay, it's kind of selected almost everything. I guess we should put that in a separate module because having that there doesn't make sense. Stop war, war. I mean, let me just type properly. Okay, so we got that, save that, auto format, and just module export stop words, right? There we go, okay. Require, um, come on. Stop war, why do you stop war, God. Apparently I cannot type today at all. Okay, so what we need to do, I think all of the stop words are lowercase, right? Yes, they are. Uh, okay, cool. So what we want to do is we want to say that we want to uh, take articles. Okay, first of all, keywords, right? So we're going to convert articles, map them to article um, and map them, whoops, to article dot keywords. So this is going to return an array for each of the entries, right? And uh, what we want to do next is we want to reduce that, uh, flatten that actually into the new array. Um, here's the thing. I know that the Node.js 11, which I am using, has array flat. So we can actually just do this, right? So in theory, if I now do keywords, we should see a very nice flat array of keywords. Uh, npm run dev, thank you very much. It is really cool when you got the proper um, std leap stuff right in the node. Okay, so come on, what? Cannot find module stop word. Uh, did I? Oh yeah, it's stop words. There we go. Okay. Yes, as I was saying, it's really convenient when you just have required stuff in std lib and doesn't have to drag additional libraries for that. <laughs> okay, come on. Now what? Uh, node server exit status one. Fail that bxjs dev script. What? Well, why did you fail? What is happening? It just silently fails for some reason. Can we start working, please? No. Okay, now it's ready. Let's explore loads. Yes, explore loads. So let's try the API and there we go. Hmm. As you can see, that works. We got a nice flat array of keywords. Uh, now we just have to filter them and um, I guess, yeah, I guess let's just filter them. So we got what filter, I cannot type today for the love of me, okay. So we're gonna filter it by uh, stop words, includes, well, includes uh, words to lowercase, right? So we wanna, I don't know, do we just wanna map it all to lowercase to make it more consistent because it's gonna look weird later on when we render them and half of them is like capitalized and the other half is not. I guess let's just map them to lowercase right away. 
So then we can filter them from stop words uh, and it actually should be not includes, right? Save that. Okay, I think that would do it, but that is actually not enough for us, right? That won't do. Okay, I will, I will, I will talk about why in a second. Let's just restart and see that it actually filters out stuff um, that is here. I, I saw like I've me weave, yeah. So that that all of that should be filtered out. It actually, might not be because they use the weird apostrophe here. Yeah, okay, that is not. Um, hmm. I guess. And that is also not not a good keyword. <laughs> All right, there is some significant data cleaning needed essentially. But you know what, that's fine. For now, that's okay. Uh, so the problem is we right now we, we get all the keywords, but that is not exactly useful for us, right? Because uh, first of all, this is not unique. There is probably more than one keyword here that is repeated over and over again and so on and so forth. And it's not really interesting for us to just know what keywords we have, right? So we want to know which ones are mentioned the mostly. So uh, what we actually want to do is we flatten that and then we say const uh, keywords map. Let's just call it this way. So we map them to lowercase. We filter. Oh, I, I totally screwed that up. So it doesn't include words. And then we do for each web. No, not that for each. Come on, stop doing that to me words. And what we want to do is we actually want to calculate the frequency of the words, right? So we're going to say keywords map um, from words. And if it exists, then we just say keywords map from words uh, plus plus. So we just count it and return. If it doesn't exist, we just say that it equals one, right? Keywords map, uh, and I think we should convert that into the result, which basically gonna be object keys. So we take all the keywords from keywords map, and then map it into the words. And I think we're just gonna map it into object There's gonna say keyword is gonna be, yeah, I guess I just renamed this word to keywords and then count is gonna be keywords map from keyword, right? This is what we want to do. And we're going to send result back. So I think if I restart that unless I Yeah, so we don't actually care about saving that. So if we started now, we should actually get back the nice uh, array of keywords with counts that are unique. Theoretically, there we go. And it's probably a good idea to actually sort it by count and then maybe filter out uh, the keywords that are, you know, like one or two occurrences, which basically means nobody uses them. So we are yes, we got that we're going to sort that um, a B and we're going to sort by is it a count minus B count? Because I always forget. And now we're going to filter out items so that item count is more than uh, let's say keyword key. Come on, keyword thresholds, right? And we're going to define that here and say that's I guess 10 would be a nice number. Right? So let us restart that. That no, come on. Restart it again and see that we actually get something uh, reasonable back, right? All right, there we go. But it is sorted the wrong way. So I always messed it up. It should be B minus A. There we go. And now we can actually take that and just use that somewhere in our um, UI, right? So I just restart that so that we have the proper data. So we got the API slash keywords uh, query now. What can we do for that? Uh, right, so we can, uh, I mean, the obvious thing would be to render the keyword cloud, right? So I guess there will be maybe a nice way of doing that. Let's say react word clouds. Is there any good component for that? I think I already, yes, used it for one of the projects we had here. This one was, I don't remember which one I used actually. There was one that didn't really work out for me. And then the other one was kind of, I think, yeah, this one was the weird one. I think this is the one that 
worked out just fine. So let's try that one. So we are going to npm install react word cloud. And do, 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 I guess we will have to readjust our values a tiny bit once we get them. And const, so let's write our uh, get keywords function. It's going to be a sync. We are, I guess we have to import the, whoops, uh, what do you call it? Oh boy, I totally forgot. What do you call it? Fetch. Do we need fetch? No, I don't. No, yes, we do need fetch, right? Why is it working here? It should be. It sh we should have to import. I totally forgot about that. How was it working before? Wait a second. Next, when Next.js does server side rendering, it, it doesn't have the browser fetch unless they changed it, right? Fetching data and component lifecycle. So, do you no longer need to do that? Did I miss that at some point? Prefetching. Isomorphic. Yeah, okay. So you still need to do that. Right. So I just forgot to do that. Uh, I guess let's do it like this. And I don't remember if we actually have it installed. No, we don't. Okay. No, no, we do have it. Okay. So I just didn't. All right. Because I'm not fetching data right here. I used the. Okay. I remember now. Right. My bad. So we had a. I just forgot how the project worked. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, we had data fetching in this GitHub component that uses isomorphic on fetch. Okay. So what do we need? Actually, that's not true, right? Because there is a fetch used over here and, and we should have isomorphic on fetch over here as well. So let me just do that. Okay, so we got a fetch. We gonna um, const keywords await fetch. And do 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 base URL. Okay, so I guess we need to a new component is going to be called explore js for example and we're going to copy the whole thing over here get isomorphic on fetch base url api keywords is going to be that oops keywords url and uh, get keywords keywords url then our json and uh, for now we're just gonna return them Okay, uh, I think that's good enough for us. So we're gonna import from components key. Uh, no, explore it was right. Come on, give me my no. Give me my auto suggestions. God damn it! There we go. And we want to get get keywords exactly. So um, we might as well use some hooks, right? So what is the use use effect, I think is what calls I mean, I don't know, we want pre rendering on the server as well, right? So I guess Next.js doesn't yet have support for that. So let us go with the classes as much as I love hooks, we are just gonna do classes here. Okay, we got class explore, da -da -da, it's gonna be a render. And done. Okay, and we want this get initial props right and we're gonna get oh it removed my get keywords god damn it i should probably disable that from time to time it gets quite annoying when it removes unused imports completely uh, right get keywords keywords and we don't care about any of that stuff right now and we just do keywords right so that should load the keywords for us and i'm just gonna do a very silly thing over here and say json thingify this props well apparently i cannot even type dots properly keywords all right so if we now run dev we should be able to see the nice array of keywords here. Well, not so nice, but you know, at least it's <laughs> some data at least. All right, there we go. That actually works. Um, I mean, it's not formatted, but whatever. So we can actually, okay, let's, let's see. Now to just to make sure that it's actually right. Code, Twitter, what reuse, comp, uh, why is there so many French words in here? 
This is puzzling. Why does why is there so many French language in the keywords? Is it because my servers are in somewhere in France and it's just like <laughs> this is interesting. Why does this happen? Like majority of them seems fine, right? There's like page, object, language, support, projects, view, CSS. That stuff looks fine, but why is there what what is this French? What does this even mean? Wait a second. Is it like you are blocked or something? Uh, Russian note. What? Detect. Your. Okay. Maybe comment. No, I mean, that that's extracted from the text of the pages, right? Compte and so. Like, there is so many French words. Accounts. Knowing what? <laughs> I'm kind of cute. Okay, so we probably got to do some deep dive for the um, for the text data to see what is actually in there because uh, Twitter gets called from France, it returns French UI. That's actually a possibility. There is quite a bunch of Twitter links, so it might be Twitter. So I guess our uh, body extraction is not really working out that uh, that well, but okay, you know what, whatever. That's that's just a really curious case of I did not expect to see that many French words in there. I guess we should send some like headers with the language at one point uh, with the crawler so that it actually crawls in a proper language. But okay, whatever. That's that's fine for now. Um, it's it's not it's not critical at least, right? So we got the React World Cloud, the Word Cloud, and now we just render this over here and keywords right so this is what we want to do no wait this props keywords show me more data maybe yeah so i i think we should do the proper explore thing at one point where it would render allow you to view all the data uh, i don't know if we will be able to do that today but um definitely at one point so that we can actually explore and see what is wrong what is broken you know and analyze it properly all right, so we got this, we got keywords, const keywords, we have to remap them a bit. Right, and we need to return keywords. So we need to map uh, from keyword count to a new object that is formatted according to this thing that is text and value. Okay, so it's gonna be text is gonna be keyword, value is gonna be count, right? I think that should do it. If we reload this now, there we go. Uh, I guess we have to specify the height properly because it looks tiny. Okay, um, I guess we include this into the div and just say that this is style eight, like 300 or something. Would that make it better? No, that's still super tiny. Why is it so, so small? Why are you so small? Um, I don't care about this stuff, come on. Okay, this is our SVG. This is div div height 300. Why is it you can you scale? Doesn't seem like it's gonna scale. Why? Why is it so small? I don't know. Okay, let's try making it bigger 500. Does it actually increase the height? Doesn't doesn't seem so. It's always just 300 pixels. Why? Um, yeah, sometimes those libraries can be a bit annoying. Um, SVG, hey, 155. Why is it 155? You could be bigger. Oh boy, okay. Um, right, let's, I mean, we can do it this way, right? So we can just say this is class name uh, word cloud. And then we can just go and say, okay, so we got style JSX, ta ta ta. Word clouds, hey, yes, uh, like 400 pixels. And then we're just gonna say uh, we have another. Can you? Hmm, okay, so we can do word clouds SVG, right? And it's gonna be, hey, 300 pixels? That make it better? No, that did not make it better. <laughs> God damn it. Okay, um, does it actually match the rule? Okay, clear the console, put this back. 
So we got this, this is work cloud JSX, right? And this is, doesn't seem to match it for some reason. I wonder why, uh, work cloud JSX. Huh. Okay, why do you not, or is it, should it be like this? I'm really bad at CSS, so don't, you know, don't hold your breath. It's probably gonna take me half a day to figure out how to properly format this with CSS. <laughs> SVG, yes. I mean, it should SVG attribute, SVG not, body, body, HTML. What would be the selector for this? Um, I know that you can get a selector from somewhere, right? How do you do, 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 remind me? Hell if I remember that. Copy, uh, selector, there we go. Okay, so this is gonna be div, 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 SVG. Um, I mean, I guess that should work, right? Why doesn't it match it? If anyone in chat knows CSS better than I do, which is highly likely, <laughs> please. Does it, can it not override the hate set on the property? Here's my question. Can you move that? No, that's still, still the same. Okay, that's not very good. Um, Da, 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 React is a peer dependency. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's let's see. React word clouds. Is there a better word cloud that does not uh do, 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 tag clouds? Maybe tag cloud. Yes, let's see tag clouds. I, think, I don't remember which one I used to be honest. Was it this one? Tech cloud. Okay, no, this is definitely not the one. This. Oh, I think it was this one. Yeah. Okay. So let's try a different component. <laughs> you cannot defeat it. Just take a different component. That's that sounds like a reasonable thing. Um, from React Tech Cloud. React Tech Cloud, and we need to npm rm. What was the name of it? We had React Word Cloud. React uh, what? React Word Cloud. Come on. Okay, and then we install the React Tech Clouds. I think we should, yeah, we will, ha no, we, yeah, we have to readjust the data a bit. Uh, so there's a value and count. We already have count, so we just have to rename, uh, uh, yeah, okay, so it has value instead of text. That's a weird wording, but whatever. Got value and count. We get React Tech Clouds. Um, put that here. And what does it take? Min size, max size, tags. Okay, so this is what we want. Let me tags, min size, max size. That's kind of nice. It allows you to specify the sizes. PM run dev. Let's see if that uh, Tech Cloud looks any better. Close that. Are we looking better? Uh, invalid expected a string or a class function, but got undefined. Am I importing? Oh, it's it's a named import. Okay. Da, 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 da. Tech cloud and yes, there we go. We do that and now it should start working, right? There we go. Okay, that's super tiny. So. <laughs> Let's tweak the sizes a bit. Let's make the smallest one 14 and the biggest one like 50. That should make it slightly more readable. That is very colorful and I cannot see, understand anything. <laughs> uh, but okay, yeah, we do have like a billion of French words. I guess this is because Scaleway is in France, right? No, wait, I had my server in Amsterdam zone, I think. That is so weird, okay, whatever. <laughs> Um, right, kind of works, but I don't like it. I want a nicer word cloud. I guess we can just take, wait, React D3. No, so D4, that's like some next level stuff already. React D3 library. I mean, we could just do it ourselves with D3.js. It's not that hard to do, but let's see if there is existing library that would just make it easier for us, right? D3 component data. Okay, um, that seems to be pretty much wrapping D3 with React components, which is not that helpful. Dataization React, React D3, bringing React and D3 together. 
Okay, so let's see, create React app, React DC. So this is using React D3. Good boy, okay, let's have a closer look at it and see if that is React D3. Okay, that's the one, I guess. React D3, GitHub IO, website, sure. Let's have a look what, domain for sale, that's a good sign. Uh, D3 core, D3 shape, Ooh, okay. Right, uh, oh boy, okay. How do I do that? Pro like, is there any good JS Word Cloud? D3 Word Cloud. Is there like a good library for that that we could just use outside of D3? Like, I would want something as packed as this one, but uh, maybe we just don't even render Word Cloud because, you know, majority of time Word Clouds are not very helpful in terms of data visualization. Where would you see a lot more icon? Cause that's, uh, I mean, as someone, who was it? I think T, yeah, Timon in uh, chat said it might be Twitter. So I'm guessing this might be it because there's this more thingy, right? That might be exactly what you, so it, it seems like the account and all these other names are from Twitter. So I guess it's just the page extraction doesn't really working well with, um, with Twitter. Okay, you know what, let's throw out the idea of tech cloud because I feel like it's going to be completely useless for us. Uh, I mean, it would look kind of pretty, but it's not going to give us much. So instead of doing work clouds, we are going to make a panel. I get rid of need any styling for now. We're going to make a panel that would list tags that we have. Uh, no, let's, let's do it this way. So we're gonna say const uh, keywords from this props, right? And we're gonna iterate over the keywords and actually, um, so it's gonna be, first of all, we can, uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Where's my explore thing? So we can, yes, just say keyword count. We can just return the rest here because we no longer care about formatting, right? So it's gonna be keyword and count. And we can just print them out like this. Keywords and count. So let's just start with that. Right. And the idea would be essentially to give the keywords that you can click and then we would show all the articles that are related to this keyword or have this keyword, right? Come on, there we go. Okay, yeah, that does not look nice, uh, but we can fix that. So first of all, oops, um, right, style, JSX. Ta -da, ta -da. Dot tags, uh, let's call it keywords, let's be consistent. Keywords, this is gonna be class name keywords, just add some styling. So keyword, I, I don't know if we're gonna need the keyword one, but this is basically gonna be display, whoops, no, what? Display flex flex direction what now that's the i feel like i'm missing some extension to pro give me a proper um css autocomplete in the style tags so flex direction is gonna be column i think right i think that should make it there we go okay so now that we have those keywords we can uh we can probably take this and make this a Hard or something. No, not like this. Um, okay, where's Bulma? Uh, whoops, Bulma. So let's style it a bit, right? So make it look slightly nicer. So we got components. We got. We can wrap this into a card. We got card, and we got card content is what we want. Card content class name. And we're gonna add the keywords over here, wrap it in the div, div, there we go. Okay, so that now should look a bit nicer, right? So it's still too big. Art keywords card. Um, I mean, I guess it does, no, I guess it does matter. So let's keywords card is gonna be, let's just make it hate, um, I don't know, 
200 pixels or something. I know this is a terrible way of doing it, but okay. And then this should be overflow auto and maybe that's it. No, not auto. Is it hidden? I always forget how to do that properly as well. Come on. Oh, I guess we need, wait a second. It has to be hate 100%, right? There we go. Okay. Now we got that. Uh, element tag. Yeah, this is the tag is what I want to use for the um, count because right now it doesn't look pretty. Or maybe it's a good idea to wrap the whole thing in the, in the tag. So tag, uh, let's see how that looks actually. Uh, oh God. <laughs> Yep, that did not work out. <laughs> okay, um, maybe maybe span would work better. <laughs> that just broke everything. No, that seems to not work at all. Right, let's try this again. <laughs> span the last name tag, right? Let's, let's see, Is that better? Whoops. There we go. Okay, that looks slightly nicer. But they are so we got these tags and let's uh, white dark. It's okay, I think. So let's make it is light, I guess. That looks fine. And one of the keywords I don't know how to read that means add this Twitter to your website. So it must be from Yeah, okay, I'm guessing it's just the extraction uh, content extraction algorithm we use is not very good in regards to, you know, smaller pages like Twitter, for example. So it just extracts a bunch of garbage that is should not be there in a body. As I said, you know, data cleaning is, is usual most important aspect in like, or takes up, I don't know, 80% of the work you typically put in. So um, let's put this this way. So this should be a bit nicer, right? Yeah, there we go. We got some counts, maybe, maybe square brackets would look better. That looks fine. Um, now we can do what we can say. So we got the cards. I guess we should wrap this into columns. Save class name columns. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. So that you know, we can actually put the words on the right sides. And then we can just do this column. And what was the sizing thing? Da -da 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 -da. Columns. Uh, no, it sizes what I want is one third, maybe that'd be enough. There we go. That looks nice. Right. So now we need to make those clickable. And now we need to show the articles on the right, right? And I think that looks like this will be it for today's stream. But uh, let's just finish this up. Okay, so first of all, um, right, so we need to do what we need to wrap this into link. And we don't have a link imported. So let us do that. Where is where do I have links? I have it. No, not here. I have it in nav bar, right? There we go. Next link. Okay, we throw that in. And then we say that link is that. And this is gonna be this and this is gonna be Okay, slash a so we we are gonna have consistent navigation schema, meaning that you should be able to share any keyword you want. Uh, hey, Dio, oh, God damn it. Let me try to read your username. Dio Gori, Gori, Dio Gorigi. Is that how you read that? <laughs> we are building BXGS weekly website that has a bunch of um, news. I have a BXGS weekly podcast. And there it contains currently the uh, links for each episode, which can be found on the GitHub as well. And we crawled those links and extract data from them. So now we are trying to visualize this data starting with the keywords. So we are doing the keywords clouds, which you can uh, then navigate and see what articles belong to the keywords. So we're going to say explore keywords. And then uh, this is going to be our keyword, right? Okay, so we do need custom routing. Yes, we are using Next.js and a pretty basic Fastify server in the back end. So we have to actually put a custom routing in the back end to render this thing. 
Okay, so we gotta change what? Uh, first of all, let's have a look if that actually rendered properly. Yep. And if I click that, it will say, okay, 404, that is expected. So now we need to tweak the routing a bit. Uh, where did we set it up? I don't remember it. Like, man, it's been, what? I think it was, we streamed it last month or something. <laughs> Didn't remember anything what happened here. All right, and uh, Fastify get app render. Okay, so we need something like this. And we need to say, uh, what was the link? Explore keywords. And then this is gonna be code, I know, word, right? Uh, and this is gonna render explore. Query and the word is gonna be Rick Param's word. This is what we want. I gotta restart the server. So theoretically, once we refresh that, we should still see the explore page. Come on, come on. Right, there we go. And now we can actually, whoops, uh, we can actually get that word from the, from the parameters. Uh, in this case, this is gonna be, yes, query file. And do, 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 so query word, right? Um, select, uh, I guess, current words, let's call it this way, is gonna be, let's just rename that, why not? Current words, right? And I guess we just say constructor, okay. Uh, whoops, we do need, do we need, no, we don't, we don't care about the word per se, right? So it should be in the, just in the, Title because we use links for navigation, current word. Right, and let's just, where's our, this is the first card. So div class name column. Let's just make sure that it works as expected. Uh, selected word, ta ta ta, current word. There we go. Okay, so theoretically we should now see the, well, it's empty. That is, should I, I guess I should refresh it. Yeah, there we go. And if I navigate, it should change. Cool. So now we need to actually query articles per word, right? So if current words and current words length, length, uh, there we go. Uh, right, and let's articles, let's just make them empty. Articles, I guess empty is a bad idea, let's just, make them undefined. And then articles is gonna be a way to get articles by keyword, let's call it this way, and then it's gonna be current word, right? So this is function that we wanna write, we're gonna put it into the explorer. And uh, now we have to tweak the um, API a bit. So there's our explorer function, export const async, it takes in a word. And I guess it's going to be a very stupid API call that just says um, keywords URL. Let's call it articles URL. No, that's a bad, bad name. Articles by keyword URL. Let's call it this way. The article, no, nah, keywords. Then we're going to have words. And then you're gonna have articles. I, I don't know if that's a good schema. <laughs> articles, uh, uh, API, I guess articles would make more sense. I guess it's just gonna do, yeah, articles URL. Rub up. What would be the easiest way to do that? Like putting that into the URL, maybe not the best idea. Just get request with a query. Yeah, why not, let's do that. So I'm just gonna say we got this, right? And then we're just gonna say keywords and then encode your right components, word. There we go. Okay, so now we need to implement that thing on the backend. So uh, we don't have article thing here. We got episodes, we got search, and we got update. Okay, cool. We can copy that. We probably don't need all of that stuff. Article. What was it, article or articles? There we go. And we need to find, uh, we don't care about that. I don't think we would need any processing at all, to be honest, articles. 
Um, yes, please fix that for me. And what we want to say is we want to say keywords um, MongoDB array includes. Now I don't remember how to do that in Mongo. I think I was like in. Yes, this is what we no. Is it in? Yes. Yeah, that should work. I'm sure. Dollar in and the value is our. Okay. Uh, here's the deal. Yeah, that would make it. That would make it way harder if I. You know what? I'm just gonna make it like this. Keywords. Word right. Because that is gonna simplify the code significantly. I think I'm ready to sacrifice some URLs just for the sake of simplicity of writing these methods. It's gonna be rec params word. And this is literally what we want. Uh, I think, is there a better way of doing that? Does the in operator, no, this comparison array query. Yeah, there you go. Uh, element match, maybe that. Build element match query. Uh, results element match greater than lower than. No, that's too complex. I guess in should be fine, right? Yeah, I think in should be fine. So let's let's test it basically. Okay, and let's change that URL over here. So essentially, instead of doing that, we just do this, right? Thing. No, we don't need that slash here as well. This is what we want. Okay, we got the server, we wrote that. Now we got to restart the whole thing. And we actually, um, I think I closed it a bit too early, but fine. Restart that code. So we want to go to API articles keyword code, right? 404. Why, what do you mean 404? Am I screwing it up? Articles keywords. Okay, God damn it code. There we go. And yep, it seems to be working just fine. God damn it, it is big. Okay, we should probably throw out some fills. Because otherwise, that's going to be very heavy. And we don't want to download 200 megabytes just to look at the articles. So we're going to add a second thing. And I'm going to take the DB and say that we want uh, so we don't want a D. So we want category, right? That sounds like an interesting thing. We want title. We want URLs. Uh, no, we don't want URLs. We want URL set. File name, uh, yes. Episode name, yes. And we don't want any of that stuff. No, I guess keywords might be in text might be. Uh, okay, maybe metadata. Maybe no text is too big. So we're not gonna fetch it and keywords as well, right? So I think whoops, come on. I think that should be sufficient. So let's try this. This should this should cut the size of the results significantly because the majority of the size last time came from the full text and HTML that we extracted with the crawler, right? Mm -hmm. Yep, that looks way nicer. So we now have actually the pretty nice uh, data sets. Uh, but now we have to fetch it actually, right? So we got this articles and two, 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 two. instead of current words, we are going to say, I guess we do want the current word as well. Um, let's maybe, I don't know, H3. Uh, current words and current word length. Uh, and da da da. Um, browsing keywords, current words, that should be fine. And then here, let's just uh, think for a second. So we want what we want pre JSON stringify uh, articles null two, and then I should get whoops, articles from here, right? Uh, reload that so we actually get the articles nicely formatted. Now the question is, does it work without? Yep, it still does work. And if I switch the articles are how's that? Wait, wait, wait what? How is it? Oh, it's probably because we did the lowercase. Uh, right, okay, okay, okay. Um, MongoDB array includes 
lowercase. I want to do that on too lower. Okay, so we can do that. Uh, to lower expression. Uh, project item to lower dollar item. Now this is aggregate queries. I don't want to aggregate. How do I select lowercase? I know lower upper top. Uh, there's got to be a way, right? Group ID to lower key count some much. No, this is again aggregate query. We do not want aggregate query. Uh, we can. Oh yeah, we can use regular expression, right? That will be slow as hell, but. On the other hand, our data set is not that big, so it should be okay-ish. Doing it in memory again is an option. Email exists true, uh, not equal. Yeah, I guess, oh man, okay. MongoDB can be such a pain in the ass from time to time. Right, so I guess we just, uh, I guess we just have to do it in memory. Uh, no, I mean, yeah, regex is one option, uh, but I can can you use regex regular expression with MongoDB MongoDB dollar in regex? Can you combine those two? Uh, new regex, I uh, uh, oh yeah, okay, so you can just say okay, uh, blah, 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 blah. new regex uh, words. And we're gonna say it's case insensitive, right? I think that should do it. Let's see, does that do it? I mean, again, this is super inefficient, but I don't know, maybe at one point we should just migrate to Postgres because it allows for way more flexible things. Okay, so code works, Votre, whatever that is, works, Twitter works, okay, so cool. Yeah, so that, that French stuff is definitely coming from Twitter, as you can see. <laughs> God damn it. All right, uh, but all right, this now works um, and it shows the header here um, just fine. So now we need to just render the articles in a nicer way than we have right now, which means we're gonna say articles map article to, oh boy, what do we map it to? I guess divs, uh, no, not DVI, right? So we're gonna map it to div. And so what do we have? We have keywords. Uh, I mean, first of all, we can just take the format from our weekly page, right? Uh, we already kind of have a very simple, we have the episode renderer, yeah, but episodes is not, oh, episode is the whole thing, right? This is where we have this, right? So there we go. We got the um, episode name. Yeah, I guess we could. No, this this links to the episodes. Wait, where do I render? Da -da -da, blah, blah, blah. Ah, okay, because I don't render it, I actually just do the con. Okay, I remember now. We just rendered the markdown, so I don't actually have the proper rendering of articles. <laughs> All right, this might be a good idea to just make. Um, um, just do it this way. Wait a second. So just do article data article, right? And that's basically it. And then we just do import article from components article. And then we just have to create this new article JS. Um, let me think, I guess something like this would work. We won't have any links here for now at least. And it's gonna be data and uh, we don't need that for now. I guess, I mean, I guess I'll just leave it empty for now. Class name, it's just title and it's gonna be data title. We don't need, no, we don't need A, right? So because we can say A href is gonna be data Oh uh, boy, okay, I need to see the data structure because I don't remember anything. Um, okay, there we go. Uh, no, tab moves focus is not what I want. KM, JSON, this please. All right, so we got the URL set. Uh, we just take the first URL. We got the title. Um, we can render the keywords in addition. So data keywords, come on. A map ta -ta 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 -ta. span class name. So it's going to be just 
bunch of tags and then word, right? So we don't care about order, account, whatever. Uh, so we did the keywords, we did the URL, we don't care about the ID, category is what we also wanted to render somehow. Edit category, there we go. Um, title, so did I use title or did I use something else? Yes, I used title, cool. So we got that. I guess we could, uh, episode, we could have a link to the episode, right? That would work. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let me think, there we go, this is what I want. We just have to figure out how to properly format this so it doesn't look like complete garbage. Uh, data file name, data uh, episode name. And yes, so we use that, we use that, we use that. We do not really need metadata. So I think we are actually fine with this. It's just we have to basically make it look nice. Um, kill that. Right, yeah, that kind of... <laughs> Kind of looks terrible to be honest, but okay. We're gonna fix it in a second. So class name, oh yeah, because title is the, let's call it episode title. They should make it a bit, yes, a bit less obnoxious. All right, so how can we format that? Let's take a look at the bull, God, why am I always writing the wrong thing here? Okay, let's see, I guess we could use cards. Uh... If any of you, by the way, watching want to contribute in, in a design side of the things, I'll be more than happy to accept pull requests because as you might have noticed, I am absolutely terrible at this. <laughs> right, so I guess we're gonna have a header that would have a title. That sounds like a nice idea. We're gonna put this over here. Whoops. Uh, title, uh, yes, card title header. There we go. Okay, uh, we don't need style. Um, we can have footer that would have what? I guess the footer would have the link to the class name, please. Thank you very much. So it should be that, that, and this should be in the body. And the body is card content. I think it should look decent at least. At least, you know, not as obnoxious as what we have right now. Category, and then we got div, just wrap it in div, we got tags. Uh, uh, kinda almost there. This freaking tag is, yes, okay. Um, right, let me think for a second. So div class name tags. I guess we do need some styling. Style JSX. So let us make it doo -doo 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 -doo, tags uh, display flex. Flex direction is gonna be row. And uh, man, I don't remember what is the what is the thing that he, ah there we go. Okay, it's already looks nicer. <laughs> Perfect. Didn't even have to do anything. Um, I guess we could do something like. Class name, category, da, 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 da. and just to make it slightly nicer, category, category, there we go, come on. And let's just do padding bottom, like five pixel or something. So this is a bit more spaced, no, margin bottom. Oh, because it is not what I wanted. This is what I wanted, right? There we go, maybe even 10 pixel. Right, that's kind of starting to look okay-ish. The only problem is that footer looks a bit broken right now. Oh, it needs card footer item. Last name, card footer item episodes. Uh, there we go, why is it, where is what? What is that, Wait, where's my item? Where did it go? Um, oh, now it shows, is it just, that is so weird. Um, okay, I guess we have to say, we probably have to wrap the formatting over here in the column, right? Column, let's call it articles. 
and we'll probably have to say that it is uh, first of all let's add some padding and then with no with is display flex and flex direction is gonna be a column right would that fix it so why are they so long this is my question okay uh, i guess i'll just move that to the bottom so i i'm guessing this thing is like first of all why is it 2000 pixels what the <laughs> why is this a thing uh, alrighty then why are you so freaking big 2000 is that like is there somewhere a really long title or something oh god i'm an idiot i, I forgot to remove the pre-typing this is what stretches it out <laughs> There we go, that looks much nicer, <laughs> god damn it. Can't use Bulma's column is two thirds. Yeah, I could, but I mean, theoretically it should fill the size, right? As long as the content doesn't go out of bounds. It's just, I forgot to remove the pre-formatted JSON, so it just stretched it unlimitedly. So this should now make, make better um, layouts. Okay, so let's do this card thing and say padding the bottom. But I guess margin bottom makes more sense. Margin bottom, like 30 pixels or something so that we actually have some spacing between them. There we go. So we actually now have a nice rendering of the articles with the text, with links to the episodes if needed, that should work. Cool. Yeah, I think that's, uh, okay. We can remove that padding from the, uh, from this thing because we no longer need that, right? I don't think we actually need that style at all. It should work as is. See? Nah, not really. Okay, uh, so we can remove that, but we do need to adjust this card a bit because it is, I don't know, this drives me crazy. It is significant enough so that I notice it and it drives me absolutely crazy. Keywords, cards. Um, I guess margin top 10 pixels? I don't know, how much is it? No, what? Is it padding? No, it's not. Oh, because it is a wrong thing, right? Uh, margin top 10 pixel. Come on, there we go. That looks nice. Okay, much better. I think it's still not quite what it should be, but you know what? I'm just gonna leave it there to drive all your perfectionist crazy so you can send me a pull request to fix that. <laughs> All right, I think that's that's enough for today. Oh, you know what I wanted to do as well? Wait a second. Uh, where is my keyword selection? So we are da -da -da, filter stop words. So we're going to do this words. We're going to filter words length. So it should be actually longer than two symbols because this is a bit obnoxious, you know, having this stuff. Maybe even three symbols. I don't know. No, three symbols might be useful, right? Uh, come on. Reload. It's ah, I guess right because it is it doesn't filter them over here. Blah, we, okay, we need some data cleaning here. We really need to do some data cleaning. But okay, fine. We're fine. This this works. We can click on on things and we see actually the um, articles for related keywords. Uh, let me think for a second. I wanted to actually change this a tiny bit. Um, da -da 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 -da. No, that is not the weekly. I wanted to explore and I wanted to say that this is keyword. Let's just do quotes here so to actually see what the keyword is. There we go. Okay, I think that's that's sufficient. There is some, like for some of them, the keyword extraction is quite good. For others is like, ugh. Okay, and this links work as well, cool. All right, I think that basically would be it for today. So I'm gonna commit all of that, but feel free to ask your questions in the chat. Feel free to, um, I don't know, send your pull requests, as I said, I will be more than happy to accept them. Uh, components, package, so we want what? Package, lock, uh, git status, git adds, pages, right get add server 
So we don't want to commit the whole database, right? Okay, I think that's enough. Let me just check that I have indeed committed all that we need. So we don't care about package. Yeah, it looks fine. So we got some stopwatch. What is this thing here? Hours, hours. Oh, 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 that is a broken stopwatch. We got to fix that. Um, where is it? There we go. There's a tabulator there for some reason. Okay, there we go. Probably also should do something about this um, back text that are in some keywords. And I guess also French thing probably, but okay, whatever. That is again, data cleaning that we should do at some point. Commit, add explore page that allows browsing articles by keywords. I feel like the next um, the next session should be data cleaning because there is too much garbage in there. And I don't know, we should we should actually check what kind of text is extracted in the articles, because I have a feeling that some of them would be absolute bullshit. <laughs> Maybe we should do like, again, extend this explore page first to show uh, to allow, you know, expanding the articles and seeing the full text and so on and so forth to actually before we start data cleaning to figure out what is wrong. Uh, nice though. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad you enjoyed the stream. All right. So I pushed it. It seems to be live now. I don't think I want to push it uh, on the production just yet. So we're going to stay with the old website for now. I mean, it, it works, you know, this, uh, all the stuff is, is functioning. We got all this, we got the search working, we got whatever is here. Basically it's, it's fine. The crawler is working. But yeah, I think I think we're we're done for today. So I pushed it, right? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. All right. So if there's any questions, once again, feel free to throw them into the chat. If not, if you're watching this on YouTube later on, feel free to ask them in the comments as usual. If you still have some, join our Discord server. We'll be more than happy to help you there with the JavaScript, and we have a quite nice and cozy community there. All right, I guess that will be it for today. So there was um, some BXJS development live streams. Thank you very much for watching. If you somehow missed the beginning, you can still rewatch the VOD right away on Twitch or later on on YouTube. That's basically it. Hey, Donna, you are a bit late for the stream. We're just being wrapping it up basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, mate. You're, it's been going for almost half, one and a half hour now, but uh, you're just a tiny bit late. I'm on Windows, I'm using Hyper because it works okay for me. And actually majority of time, I'm just using the VS Code integrated terminal. And uh, on uh, Mac OS, I typically use the um, iTerm. I would use something better on, or like I would use native one on Windows, but VXJS dev is down. No, it's not down, right? It loads, I mean. Try cleaning your um, DNS entries because I screwed up with the DNS setup at the very first day. So it might be that. Uh, just try wiping your DNS entries. As I said, you know, I, I, right, right after I bought it, I screwed up with the DNS entries and broke it immediately. So I had to refix them and DNS cache can be a bit annoying. Right. Uh, yes, Commander is pretty nice as well. I've tried that. Uh, but I mean, Hyper works better, at least worked better with uh, VSL when I tried it. No, BXJS is not like RxJS. BXJS is an acronym for building X with JavaScript, which is sort of a set of streams and courses and podcasts that aim to tell you about building things with JavaScript. We have a whole large GitHub that demos how to do different things with JavaScript. So uh, even though the acronym is pretty close, no, it's not the same. Although I do like RxJS quite a bit. <laughs> All right, any other questions, guys? I will be more than happy to stay in chat for, I don't know, 20 more minutes. I have time. Um, you know what, I'm just gonna, just gonna really quick uh, check um, where's my server? Let me just SSH into my server and check that my data processing is running. And if it is still working. Yeah, okay, two and a half mil process. So we are at a nice pace here. Right, so I, you know, my data processing for work is still running. So we are yes, more than happy, more than happy to basically stay in chat guys. So if you have any other questions, 
Godhub, that is not what I wanted to type. <laughs> All right. Um, do you have a programming college degree or other? Yes, I have a PhD in computer science. But that is uh, not to say anything. Basically, I have a master's degrees in uh, hardware engineering and PhD in computer science. So it's, you know, like I am, I guess, partially self-taught as I would put that. Flash the cache and now it works. Okay, so it was DNS. All right. Um, any other questions, any other things you want to discuss, ask me or chat about? We, we are starting to get quite a variety of languages in BXJS group, actually. <laughs> this is a bit crazy. Uh, Donna, thank you very much for your donations as usual. You are not late. It's just I've started streaming uh, a bit earlier than usual today, but I'm really glad to see that you're able to catch a stream. You must be smart then. No, I'm actually really dumb. You, if you watch all of my previous streams, you will see how many mistakes and errors I do here. So no, that's not just, I just very persistent. I would put it this way. All right, any other questions or things you wanna say? <laughs> okay, uh, meanwhile, what can I tell? Where do I work? I work in the university for the moment uh, as a postdoc doing like research and development. You can, I think actually, wait, no, that's not what I wanted. I think I actually have a link in my GitHub profile. Uh, right, there we go. There's a DICE group. There is our group. We actually do majority of stuff as open source. So we are also on GitHub. Um, degree helped you a lot in finding job. I always have been an outlier in terms of finding jobs. I never worked in sort of very large industry companies. And I specifically like I got I landed a pretty good job after getting my PhD, but I quit a year after after spending a year there because I got bored of um, well bored of tasks that we had at hand after we finished the product. So you know I don't I wouldn't say that I'm a good person to ask, but um, yeah the the having a degree definitely has been a boon because it makes some bureaucracy related things a lot easier. So this is the uh, data science research group that I work in. If you're curious, the links are on my GitHub page. So you can just go and check it out there. <laughs> He's the knowledge who pierces the sky. I mean, yeah, sure. I think I should put that on my, um, what do you call it? The person, the cards, God, what do you call it? Uh, business cards, right? Business card. Is it business cards? Yes, business cards. I should put that on my business cards on like a back back of it. <laughs> it's gonna be a good slogan. <laughs> All right. Any other questions or things you want to discuss or any other things? You also spend much time on GitHub. Uh, yes, significant amount. So I wouldn't say like, you know, a lot uh, because we do have some private projects or the ones that we don't share immediately that we work on. For example, we have on the GitLab, like we have a bunch of stuff here. We also have a private, uh, privately hosted um, Git repositories that are used for internal projects that are like, you know, done with uh, industry partners that cannot be shared, for example, for various privacy reasons and data reasons. But 90%, I would say, is on GitHub. And yes, I do spend a lot of time there. <laughs> Maybe a bit too much. <laughs> um, uh, Exo, that, that is very easy. Just look at the spec and you would know that this is, um, this is obviously 03, 0030000004, I think. Or I probably screwed up the number of zeros, but there it is. Where is the broadcast now? Um, I mean, once I stop the stream, you should be able to rewatch the VOD. And uh, after that, it's gonna, I mean, I will re-upload it to YouTube as, as soon as I can. But for now, we're just sitting here chatting essentially. So if you guys have anything else you wanna ask, um, ask away. Right. Um, do you work with the Docker? Yes, I work with the Docker pretty extensively. I, um, I even built a tool for myself based on Docker that is called ExaFrame and that allows you to deploy things in one command. It is even relatively popular on GitHub, like 616 stars. That's, that's pretty impressive. At least I think this is my most start project. 
Why do you not have dark theme everywhere? I I don't know. I like I I use dark theme wherever possible, but not everywhere at all. So it's like, especially you know, considering the Windows doesn't really have good dark theme integration yet. Like I do have dark theme everywhere on my MacBook. Like that is my primary working machine. I just stream from Windows because this is sort of uh, a setup that I already have. And yeah, it's just not as good in supporting dark themes yet, I think. But there you go. Personal broadcast studio. Oh, you mean as in uh, where I'm broadcasting from? I got it. No, th that's my home. I work from home like 90% of time. I just go to university for meetings majority of time. So our team is pretty distributed and we have people working from UK, Germany, uh, I think we haven't had some guys working from Russia for some time and then they essentially move here, but we do have the office and visiting essentially is optional. So, you know, you just have to be there for important meetings. Other time you can just work from home and this is what I do. This is where I perform best essentially. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? This is just my homeroom essentially. And you know, I, I play, play games here and I program here and I work here. And uh, yeah. Okay. Um, right, doesn't seem like there's any more questions or any other things you guys wanna discuss. I would then go and do a lunch break and eat something. And then hopefully by the end of that time, uh, my data processing for work will finish so I can continue working on the data set. But okay, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the stream. As I said, feel free to join our Discord server if you wanna continue the discussion. We'd be more than happy to chat with you there. Um, yeah, have an awesome rest of the week. See you on the Saturday for the podcast and see you next week for the more development streams. Bye.